understand. The only reason Lisa didn't knock all that Mrs. Clara off the top of your head is because she didn't want to go back to jail. Hey y'all, it's your girl P. Hope and we are back with another week of Love After Lockup. Y'all know this is my shit. So I try to get these videos out as promptly as possible. And I hope that you all had an amazing week. And we're going to jump right into the mess. Okay? Y'all ready? Let's go! I want to start with Rachel and Doug. Okay? Because that's who they popped the show off with. So it's the next day. And Rachel and Doug are laying in bed, gazing in each other's eyes and kissing. And, you know, Rachel's just on cloud nine. She said that she has not been in love like this since she was like 13 or 14 years old. So she is actually in puppy love right about now. Okay. All right. She is loving her some Doug. All right. But they got to get up because they have to be parents. All right. Little Dougie is on the way home. Little Dougie has been hanging out with his grandma, Mama Rachel. And it's time for his ass to come home and meet his daddy. So, they pull up in the driveway and um, Rachel and Doug were already outside on the porch. So, soon as Little Dougie got out of the car, Doug met him halfway in the driveway. And, you know, just extended those arms out for a great big hug. And at first, when little Dougie got out of the car, he was looking like, you know, bro, we ain't even got to do all this for real, for real. But when he saw his dad extend those arms for some love, you know, it just sucked little Dougie in like a freaking magnet. And they held each other for a very, very long time. And you could tell that little Dougie needed that hug. He has needed that hug for a while. Like, you could just see it. So, um, that was a really, really cute moment between those two. And they exchanged I love yous. And that was kind of it for that scene. And then they, um, uh, Mama Rachel and all of them went to the back porch. Because, um, Mama Rachel is actually getting to meet Doug as well. So, you know, she's just asking him some of the basic questions. You know, like, you know, so what have you done so far since you've been home? And... You know, Doug wanted to let Mama Rachel know that, you know, yeah, we had such a long ride home, but, you know, we had to stop by the hotel um, before we got home because we was definitely trying to make you a little grandbaby. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so I definitely um, had her in all different kind of positions. And, you know, we were really getting strange off up in the room. And at this point, Mama Rachel is looking at the both of them like, I'm trying to figure out at what point did I ask for this? Like, what? And that was supposed to, Rachel, Rachel, that was supposed to be the moment where, you know what I'm saying, you kind of pop Doug in the mouth, pinched him on the leg, you know, or just looked at him and been like, you know, bruh, like, my mama don't need to know all that. Like, you're doing a bit much. You know, you just check that ass real quick. Like, you gotta you gotta let people know their boundaries and, and things of that nature. But no, in true Rachel fashion, she sat there and nodded her head like, yes, mom, my cheeks have been spread from east to west. And I'm not sure if I'm pregnant or not. So, that's where we are. Yeah, that's what the hell Rachel had going on. So, um, at that point, Mama Rachel wasn't sure if she wanted to ask any more questions or not, but she did, um, ask Doug, like, so, you know, what do you plan to do now that you're out? Like, what are you going to do to, to fend for yourself? And Doug was very honest again with that answer. He said that he did take up a couple of trades while he was locked up, but he doesn't feel like the trades that um that he has a certificate for or a degree in however you want to call it he doesn't feel like any of those jobs are in that area so he would have to go you know pretty far out to be able to find a job in the um the trade that he has actually taken up while he was locked up 
And so then he was like, but you know, I can always, you know, pick up cans and sell shit on the side of the road and things of that nature and we'll be fine. Again, Mama Rachel didn't find none of that shit funny. Because when she did her confessional, <laughs> when Mama Rachel did her confessional, she said, um, I feel like Doug definitely needs to humble himself and realize that he's not um in jail anymore and you know basically don't be talking to her like you talk to them fools in the chain gang it's basically what mama rachel was trying to say okay um because you had her <laughs> you had her fucked up for lack of better word okay and she also said that you know she can definitely tell that doug knows exactly where his bread and butter is okay so speaking of the bread and butter, as they moved on in conversation, they got to one point of the conversation. I don't know if Mama Rachel brought it up or how this even got on the damn table, but it came to a point where they were asked about their relationship. And that is when little Dougie decided that he wanted to, you know what I'm saying, intercept that thing. He wanted to intercept the conversation and he was like, yeah, because, you know, you didn't have all kind of women. And so at this point, Doug is looking like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about, son? And he's like, yeah, you've had at least 10 girlfriends within the last three years. Like, so when, you want to tell me what's going on? Like, I'm not sure if I can get comfortable with this broad or not. Because, you know, you just, you move on really quickly. And so at this point, Doug wants to chastise but he understands that this is just the first couple of hours of him and his son interacting together in person. So he just kind of tried to laugh it off and he made a joke about it. And he was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, what can I say? You got to pick a lot of flowers until you pick the right one, you know. So he did his best to kind of divert the conversation into a lighter kind of vibe. But we all caught it child we all caught it doug you're a hoe you're a user and your son and mama rachel are not here for it okay as they continue to talk and mama rachel is like okay so you know what are you guys gonna do and uh what are y'all about to do or whatnot and so rachel was like well i was thinking that we could all go to dinner and she invites her mom to go to dinner with them as well but Mama Rachel was like, no, I think I'm going to sit this one out because I feel like you three really need to get that family bond. Go ahead and get that started. And, you know, I'll catch up with you guys on the next one. And we all know why she opted out because, you know, she could barely sit on that porch with Doug. She was definitely not about to break bread with him, at least not now anyway. You know what I'm saying? Um, she's definitely got her eye on Doug and it's not looking too good for you, buddy. But yeah, so the next thing is them going to dinner and they sit out there. They're eating dinner in this really janky looking restaurant. But you know, who are me to judge? Um, you know, they look like they were enjoying it. So I, it ain't got nothing to do with me. And so as they're eating, Dougie decides that, you know, he wants to play 21 questions and he starts grilling the hell out of his dad. All right. Um, he starts asking questions like, how many times did you drop the soap when you was locked up? Um, what is it really like in there? Um, if you had a choice to be free and stay in the free world or be in prison like which one would you want to do kind of like you know which one do you like better at this point because it almost seemed like you like jail a little better than you like your freedom so i just really want to hear it out the horse's mouth let me tell y'all little dougie was not letting up off of his dad like he had his dad by the nuts and he was not letting them go okay and um so what um I'm trying to think of what he said. 
Y'all, I cannot remember and I didn't write it down off of what exactly it was that Dougie said. But out of all of these questions and, you know, just this sly, um, just this descending type of tone that Dougie had in his voice, like, Big Doug was over it, okay? Daddy Doug was over it and he said, hey, you want to talk to me with a little more respect? And he said, no, you little filthy womanizer. And I said, oh my God. Listen, this, it was at this moment. I realized that <laughs> there is a huge difference between the way Caucasian children can talk to their parents and black children can talk to their parents because I don't give a damn about being locked up and being out of his life for how long? Like a black daddy would have never stood for that. A black mama would have never stood for that. Like, listen, it's a lot. And it was even one point at the table where Doug had asked little Dougie to stop playing with his straw. And he put his finger up to that straw, like right there to the tip of that straw, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, fool, what you gonna do, fool? If I tap this motherfucking straw, what you gonna do? And I was like, oh my God. So that was a huge eye opener for me because I'm like, hmm, Rachel, Doug, y'all have a preteen on your hands. He's already filled with anger because his mama ain't shit. His daddy ain't shit. He done got stuck with his, his new stepmama that he really don't know nothing about. You about scared to discipline him because it's a fresh and new situation for you. So I understand you don't want to come in hot. But... It's like you guys are putting little Dougie in a situation, in a position. Let me say that. You guys are putting little Dougie in a position to where if y'all don't be careful, he is going to be wearing the pants in that house. And I ain't talking about on down the road. I'm talking about real soon. Little Dougie is going to be running that house. He's going to be telling you when to cook. He's going to be telling you when to clean his room, wash his clothes, and he's going to leave the house and he'll be back when the fuck he get ready. Because what you going to do? Like, I can see that if you guys do not uh, gain control of the reins in that situation, <laughs> Little Dougie is going to be the spitting image of Big Dougie real soon. And it's all going to be because he's felt like he's feeling like he's been dealt a bad hand. And then also when children like are like that, are like little Dougie. Let me tell you something, Rachel. I know you might not believe this. Like they thirst for discipline. They thirst for somebody to just be on their ass because they feel like they've been ignored for so much of their life. You know, it's very easy for little Dougie to say, well, I can do what I want to do and I can say what I want to say because nobody cares. Like, my mama don't care. My daddy didn't care, obviously, because he keep going to jail. Um, everybody else that they sit me around with, like, you know, they just let me do what the hell I want to do. So, nobody cares. Trust me when I say, Rachel, if you start to discipline him and let Doug slowly come in behind you and start disciplining as well, like, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna be a little rebellious at some times and things like that, but he will appreciate you for it. I'm telling you, you will get a lot further with sugar than shit. Okay, because right about now, y'all are serving shit. Little Dougie ain't going for it, and neither am I. That was Doug and Rachel. And Little Dougie. Woo! Deontay and Nicole. <laughs> Deontay and Nicole. Listen, y'all, Deontay is back. Deontay is back over at Nicole's house. He's done came to pick her up. 
because damn it i'm gonna take you back to the crib you going to the crib okay this is day two so they make it to the crib he makes her close her eyes and he walks her in the house and he's like okay baby open your eyes she opens her eyes and the living room is flooded with red rose petals it's uh these heart-shaped candles he got all this shit laid out he probably had a little jazz music going he got some chocolates out he got the wine out so then he walks her back to the guest room and he's even decorated the guest room child he got bedroom lights christmas lights all kind of goddamn lights hanging all over the room he got the rose petals all over the bed in there and he greets her with more gifts okay there's more gifts it's a big ass teddy bear two pair of jordans and then a bag that she opens and realizes that it's more lingerie in there so at you know nicole you can't get away from this lingerie thing no matter how many times you say oh i forgot it i left it at home no matter how many times you set them bitches on fire he's just gonna keep buying you more because he wants to see you in some lingerie all right so um like nicole said when she lifted up the lingerie she was like listen i'll put it on but i still mean what i say when i said like i don't want to be touched like we're not having sex and i don't want to be touched and he was like come on man like you you don't need to keep playing with me like that and she was like i'm not you know like nobody's playing with you like listen i don't have to do nothing i don't have to put this shit on now so then he you know what i'm saying then that's when he got to acting like lenny williams like he just, girl, I, I, I love you. Like he got to doing all that stupid ass bullshit. So she was like, okay then, you know what I'm saying? You better act right if you want me to act right. So he was like, okay, cool, you know, whatever. Just go put the lingerie on. So a couple of minutes later, Nicole come out the room and go over to the main bedroom. <sighs> Lord, and she got on the lingerie. And she's like, okay, before I start this dancing for you, you need to put your hands under your ass. So he had to sit on his hands in order for her to give him a lap dance. <laughs> Deontay, if this was not a sign that you're not getting any action anytime soon and that you need for somebody to take your debit card away from you take your credit cards away from you hell at this point take your car keys away from you so that you can stop going over to this damn girl house getting played to the gods like i don't know i don't know i think i think i think a part of you likes getting used and likes getting played i don't know why that excites you or you know what part about that makes you feel special but it's getting weird okay it's getting weird at this point my guy but nevertheless he put his hands um under his ass and she started dancing now <laughs> um you know i'm gonna give y'all the good and the bad all right so let's start with the bad. The bad is that Nicole came out here and if y'all remember from last week's episode, she was spraying all of this spray tan shit on her. But baby, you missed a couple spots. She had a patch missing off her face. She had several patches missing off of her ass. And she definitely had some parts of her thighs where the spray tan was just absolutely missing. Let me tell you something, Nicole. Next time, if you can't get a natural tan or if you cannot go to a tanning spa, leave the spray tan at home. Spray tan is not working for you. It was not your tone or maybe you sprayed too much of it on. I'm not sure which one, but you looked a damn fool. But on the positive side, I will say because I'm not no hey ass bitch, you do have a nice body. You have a nice body. You have a nice ass. You have a nice little waistline. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that you are a very nice looking woman. But, 
Nicole doesn't think that, you know, her body is nude worthy because she tells Deontay that she's not even having sex with him, period, until he gives her that boob job that he promised her. Listen, I don't know how much money Deontay has told her that he has, or I don't know what, you know, maybe this is just something that she's made up in her head and just thinking that, you know, Deontay has a good little amount of money. But making, he said, he said he makes $24 an hour. So at $24 an hour and a boob job costs anywhere from 10 to 20, 20 rec. Let me tell you something. Deontay, your balls is going to be old, hanging, and shriveled up all at the same time before you can afford to put these titties in Nicole's chest. So, you know, you probably want to have some type of conversation with her now, like, as far as keeping it real with her and just let her know, like, Listen, you're not about to have these titties no time soon. You're going to be on the itty bitty titty committee for a while if you're waiting on me to pay for this. Like, far as I know, any kind of breast augmentation, that's not something that you pay for in installments. This is, you have your money up front, you get your procedure done, and you go on about your business. Far as I know, that's how that works. So, like, what? What are you doing, son? You, you make me itch. Nicole says that her small breast, you know, just make her really insecure. So, um, she's ready to, you know, she's done dancing. But then let me tell you how she contradicted herself because she's done dancing for Deontay and she's ready to go put her clothes back on. But that was not before she let us know that. You know, when she was locked up, she used to dance for the girls. She used to dance for the girls for birthdays, anniversaries, and pretty much anybody that had money to afford to see her dance, okay? And I told y'all that in episode one that Nicole um, acts like a stripper or has to, had been a stripper. Y'all know how these H words get me. Um, like I said, or she was a stripper sometime down the road, all right? So, um, yeah, she said she used to dance for the girls. But um, she's done dancing for Deontay. And that's just that on it. So, at this point, Deontay is down on his knees. He hollering all in front of the damn guest room. Though, so I'm like, oh, no, nah, baby, please don't do me like that. Don't do me like that. First of all, Deontay, you shouldn't have took your damn clothes off showing us that little rack of lamb chest that you got. Thinking that that was going to really just do something to set the mood off. That didn't turn Nicole on. Nicole likes puss. Now we get to the next day. So apparently we're on day three. Deontay is taking Nicole to get her damn hair done. Soon as she gets in the car, she fired for cigarette. Looking over at him talking about some. What you, what? You, you got a little attitude or something because I ain't spent the night with you last night. And I'm like, damn, you curved him again? But, you know, I couldn't even be mad at her because, y'all, this hell about to get on my nerves. But um, I couldn't even be mad at Nicole because Deontay, your dumb ass sat there and let her curve you like that. And you still came to pick her up for day three. So he's picking her up to take her to go get her hair done, okay? And if you did not notice... That's the reason I have this wig on because once again, for two weeks in a row, I am paying homage to Nicole because this is how the hairstylist styled her hair and made her look about um, 35 years old. But Nicole loved it, so I'm here for it too. Hell. So she gets in the hair salon and as soon as she gets in there, she's like, oh my God, my bestie, my best friend. Ciao. I did not catch best friend name but yeah she introduced us to best friend and she said that she was locked up with best friend now listen y'all when they showed us the picture of best friend 
Best friend had a black eye. So I don't know if best friend had got the hooking in the club or if she was in an abusive relationship. So if it was door number B, mm -hmm, I said number B. Yes, if it was door number B, then, um, you know, I'm definitely not cracking no jokes because domestic abuse is not funny. It's nothing funny about it. But listen, if you was just in the wrong place, wrong time, you was talking your shit and a bitch whooped your ass. Oh, bitch, I'm definitely cracking jokes. I'm definitely on your ass, okay? Because that eye was not right. But anyway, um, the eye is fine now. And they're at the hair salon. Y'all, <clears throat> what is up with me in these H-A words? Somebody tell me what's wrong with my throat. Leave it down in the comment section. Anyway, um, they're at the hair salon and, you know, they all excited to see each other. And she's like, girl, just sit down. Tell me what's been going on. So as the lady is putting the hair extensions in her hair, she's like, girl, you know, I ain't been out for two days. But, honey, you know, Deontay been doing me right. He done bought me these two Michael Kors watches two pair J's, all this money, like, you know, I'm just out here doing it, and so, she was like, well, why do you think he doing all this for you, what you think he want in return, and she was like, girl, you know what he want in return, so then best friend was like, well, when was the last time you had sex, and she was like, with a boy or with a girl, and she was like, I mean, And then that's when the hairstylist was like, girl, y'all can, um, y'all can do that up in there. So Nicole was like, yeah, you know, we've been doing, a, you know, we can do whatever. We do it all in there. And then when she went in her confessional, she said that the last time she had sex with a girl was about a week ago. And she also said in the confessional that the whole time she was locked up, she did good. She wasn't messing with nobody. And then the last week before she got out, it just happened. You know what I'm saying? Some shit just popped off. And the next thing you know, she was in cat. That's what was going on. But I was a little bit confused if she was trying to say like that was her first time in cat. Or was she just saying that that was technically her first time cheating on Deontay since they've been in a relationship? Because best friend said, okay, girl, you know, you done got your hair done. You looking like you looking. So we need to go out. Um, do you want to invite some people? And Nicole was like, well, bitch, who the hell we going to invite? Because, you know, we don't hang with nobody but inmates. And she said, well, you can call Teal. And that's when Nicole let us know that Tia is her ex-girlfriend. Her and Tia dated for a year. So that's why I got confused at. Because I'm like, um, okay. You and Tia dated for a year. So, you know, I'm pretty sure within that year, you was doing something, right? So hopefully that's just where I got that confused at. It's like she was just saying that she did not cheat on Deontay up until the week before it was time for her to get out. But, you know, she's always had a thing for the girls, okay? Maybe that's what she was trying to say. So then homegirl is like, you know, well, call Tia and see if she want to hang out with us tonight. So um, Nicole calls Tia. Tia answered the phone and that is the cliffhanger for next week. Okay? Okay. Courtney and Josh. Okay? Courtney and Josh got very serious with us this week. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing. I'm not going to come for Courtney and Josh this week. But I will say that, you know, they're opening scenes, sitting on the sofa. They were surrounded by dogs. They were surrounded by dogs. And I'm just going to leave it right there. I, I, I'm... I'm going to make myself be over the shock of these dogs being all over them all the freaking time, okay? Anyway, so um, they're sitting on the couch and, you know, Josh and Courtney are just talking about, well, Josh is really just talking about how um, he really messed things up with his grandma. He actually calls his grandma mom. And because um, his mom actually gave him up for adoption. 
And so, you know, I guess grandma was the one that adopted him. But at some point while he was locked up, he ended up writing grandma a letter and pretty much just telling her how shitty of a parent that she is and how that everything that has gone on in his life thus far and him being a criminal and all of this and that and the third is basically her fault and how bad of a person she is okay and as he's talking about it he's getting very emotional and he's crying and um he started yeah like i said he started crying and then courtney was like well you know why don't you just give her a call and you know at least see if you guys can have a conversation so so josh calls they call her mama rose so josh calls mama rose and he's like hello hey how you doing and she's like hello and he said do you know who this is she was like yes and he's like yeah it's it's josh how you doing i'm all right how you let me tell y'all something mama rose could care less mama rose could care less some of that you already said everything you had to say to me in a letter so what are you calling for what do you need so he was like um well you know i was calling because i wanted to come see you i wanted to come lay my eyes on you and um he was like you know courtney's the only one that i really got holding me down right now and in a sense i had got a feeling that he was asking mama rose you know because y'all know he can only stay with courtney for 14 days so i had a feeling that josh was asking mama rose pretty much on you know on the 15th day is it okay if i come stay down there with you mama rose said certainly not I don't think that's a good idea. No, you're going to have to figure it out. And so he was like, okay, well, you know, I still want to come see you. I still want to come talk to you. Do you think that'll be okay? And she was like, yeah, you know, come on down. Child, let me tell you something. They got down there to Mama Rose's house. She let their ass come out on the porch. Don't come in my motherfucking house. Um, You know, she gave him a little hug or whatever. But... When she did her confessional, she let us know that Josh's mom, which is her daughter, um, had got on drugs and was not taking care of Josh. So she took custody of Josh and she raised him the best way that she knew how. And Josh's father actually um, used to have, uh, what is it called? It was some type of custody where he would come and get Josh every now and then or whatever. But he got those rights taken away from, from him because they found out that he was giving Josh beer. Okay? So, um, you know, Josh was pretty much raised very similar to the way little Dougie is being raised. You know what I'm saying? He ended up being a position, in a position where he didn't have his mama or his dad because they was just out doing what the hell they wanted to do. So, um, yeah, and as a result, you have Josh, who is just now getting out of prison. But, yeah, so, Josh just reiterates that how sorry he is that he um, said all those harsh things to her in the letter. He definitely let her know that none of it was true. He was saying all of that stuff out of anger, and he admitted that he is the type of person that... Um, he likes to make other people hurt because he's hurt. And so, you know, I thought that was very big of him. And I definitely um, felt like he was being honest. But at the same time, I felt like you're only doing this because you realize you don't really have a whole lot of places that you can turn to. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, let me go back to what I know. So, yeah, in a way, you were apologizing, but at the same time, you was kissing ass because you need somewhere to go. Like, let's just call a thing a thing. So, I couldn't really get into that whole sentimental moment because I kind of saw through the bullshit just a little bit. Like, and um, Mama Rose saw through it too. Some of that, all right, now, it was good seeing y'all. Take care. 
Anissa and Jeff. <laughs> Anissa and Jeff. Okay. Anissa is at home, child. And she got 79 rollers in her hair. She's sitting at home looking like um Marge Simpson, child. Because she said that she wants to look her best for Jeff. Jeff is coming home today. And it just is what the fuck it is. All right. So she wants Cal. Cal is over there. Cal is at the house and she wants Cal to ride with her. Now, I don't remember her reasoning for wanting Cal to ride with her, but I, you know, I'm guessing that Cal is like one of her best friends because she didn't ask Patty to ride with her because I think Patty, listen, Patty don't be here for the bullshit. Um, so Cal might be just a little more lenient when it comes to that. And she probably figured like, okay, he's a man. So if anything goes wrong, if the car break down, if, you know, Jeff get crazy and start trying to swing on her, maybe Cal can help me in some type of way. You know what I'm saying? So I get it, Anissa. I get it. But anyway, so they're off to see the wizard. They're on their way to, um to pick up Jeff at the damn bus station. And, you know, uh, Anissa is just really trying to convince Cal that, you know, Jeff is 100% real. I'm so excited for you to see him. I'm so excited for you to meet him. And Cal is just still like, listen, I believe it when I see it. When I see this man, you know, we'll go from there. Um, Long story short, the bus pulls up that um jeff is supposed to be on and everybody got off except for jeff's ass all right so the bus has came and the bus has left and anisa is standing there with this welcome home jeff sign for absolutely not okay because this fool is not on the bus anisa was hot because she told us that jeff has used her two times he has stood her up two times already she's already done this and she just knows that this particular time he it's real and he's ready and they're going to be a married ass couple like um he's already admitted to her that the last two times that they tried to do this he wasn't ready and he was just using her for her money but this time, it's not about money. It's about love, okay? Um, so, as the bus rides off, Anissa is cussing like hell. She said, oh, this is some fuck. This is some fuck shit right here. This is that bullshit that I'm talking about. So, as she's out there cussing, she said she's about to go home, rip that wedding dress in a million pieces, and just be done with this whole shit. Because at this point, now you done embarrassed me on national television and, you know, it's just no coming back from this. I'm about to go home and get drunk. Or I'm about to go home and fuck on Kyle. Because at this point, I'm blown. And just as she was about to end it all, child, Jeff has come from around the corner. And she is just ecstatic. She is just, you know, she's delighted. So they're hugging, they're kissing. Jeff has got a cigarette in his hand. And he said that he had fell asleep on the bus and that's why he missed his stop. Let me tell you something. Ain't nobody sleeping that hard and you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, fool, you just got out of jail. You're not going to miss your stop, y'all. He came around that corner with a half a cigarette in his hand and them eyes was bloodshot red and they was a little bit low. Now, I do know that some people wake up and their eyes be a little red, especially when you're tired previously. Um, so, you know, I get that. But Jeff was giving me high vibes, y'all. I don't know. I don't know. Jeff was giving me high vibes. Now, Anissa says that she's only iffy about the relationship because of the age difference. Jeff is 40 and she's 51. And I said, Anissa, Jeff is what? And she said, Jeff is 40. And I looked over at Jeff and I said, Jeff, you can't be 40 because I'm 40. I'm 40. And um, 
Then I look back over at Jeff and I just say, you know what? Drugs. Let me tell y'all something about drugs. Jeff looks 65. And I say, I would say Anissa looks around her age. I would give her, you know, late 40s to early 50s. But wow, Jeff, you're 40. Get it together. Um, so after they did all that howdy do's. They get in the car and it is time to go. Um, Anissa let us know that she is not even going to have time to give Jeff a long ass hug. Because it is a very short window from the time that he has to be from the bus stop to the halfway house. And you know if you're not there on time it just kind of sets you right back at square one. And you go back to the jail. Okay. So, um, she's not about to play on this man's time and she's got to get him there. So, as they're riding and she's doing her, you know, whatever she got to do to get him there on time, they're just making casual conversation or whatnot. And <laughs> Jeff says that he's getting irritated because everything that he's talking to Anissa about, Cal ass is chiming in and Cal ass just has a whole lot to say. And he's just trying to figure out why. Like, who is this dude? Where did he come from? Why does he have so much to say? And why did Anissa ask him to ride with her? Like, Jeff is highly irritated with Kyle right about now. But um, Kyle doesn't give a damn. Kyle doesn't give a damn. Um, they get to the halfway house. And when he gets out, of course, they're kissing. And he goes on about his business. And Kyle said, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff didn't have nothing to say. Jeff was definitely on some fuck you, okay? And y'all, just when I thought that this particular episode was going to be boring boots, there was Stan and Lisa. Let me tell you. Let me. I ain't gonna go into it right now. Let me just let me just go on with the scene. So Stan and Lisa finally get to the house. And Stan lets us know that the ride home was certainly not as affectionate as he had hoped it would be. You know, um, you know, the vision that he had in his head for the ride home. He thought it was going to be a lot of hugging, a lot of fondling. You know, he was probably hoping to get a little head while he was driving. But none of that happened because if y'all remember... Um, Lisa had got a phone call from her son while they were in the car and it just really threw Lisa's whole vibe off, okay? Um, which is completely understandable, okay? Um, nobody was looking at Lisa crazy about feeling the way that she was feeling except for Stan. So, once they made it to the house, he said that Lisa was still acting a little funky and still had an attitude um, about the phone call. But Lisa did not have an attitude towards Stan. Lisa had an attitude because of what Stan said. If y'all remember, <laughs> when she hung up that phone, Stan said, you know, I wish that you would just be done with all of this so that we can start a new life. And she was like, be done with all of what? Like, this is my whole child. I'm a mother. Just like you're a father, I'm a mother. So what is it exactly that you want me to be done with? And he was like, oh, no, no, no. You know, I'm not talking about your son or whatever. But how quickly did the truth come out and did a hit dog holler? Because she went out on the back porch to smoke her cigarette and just meditate on you know, try to try to strategize a little bit on what she should do. Because at this point, she was feeling conflicted. So once Stan joined her on the back porch, she said, Listen, I know you came to pick me up from the jail. I'm very appreciative of it. But you got to understand where I'm coming from as a mother. And right here at this particular point in time, I am torn between being here for you and loving on you but being a mom like my son needs me and at this point stan went ahead 
and I guess he figured hell he was back on his turf at this point you know like bitch we ain't in a car no more so you can't grab the wheel and kill both of us so I'm just gonna say what the fuck it is that I gotta say and Stan said your son is 22 years old he's a grown man he should be able to figure things out for himself know why but I never saw this kind of energy I just never expect this stands mouth to be set up the way that it's set up because I could have never been Lisa in that moment maybe I could have been Lisa in that moment because I will realize that I literally just got out and if I sock this old ass man, I'm going right back to jail. So maybe I could have been Lisa in that moment. But Lisa stayed in that house a hell of a lot longer than I ever would have. Because the moment that I realized that Stan could not understand where I'm coming from as a mother. And he has kids. It's one thing for you to be a 65 year old man with some long ass saggy ass nuts it's one thing for you to be that and not have no kids but it's another thing for you to be that old and a father and still not be able to comprehend where the hell Lisa was coming from as a mother like it's no way that you was that thirsty and that horny that you couldn't just wait and let Lisa handle that situation with her child and then get back to the loving. Like, what is wrong with you, Stan? I was, y'all, I was so taken aback, but it got worse. <laughs> it actually got worse because she said you know she was talking to him and she's like you know i'm just trying to figure it out but lisa i'm gonna tell you now i'm gonna tell you where i wasn't with you you said i was hoping that you would at least extend the olive branch and offer for my son to come over here with us and that way i will be able to stay here with you and I will know that my child is okay. On that, In that instance, I was with Stan. It's too soon for me to be asked, for me to be allowing your family to be in here with us. Like, no, that's doing too much. So, you know, I don't think that that was the answer. So, if that's what you were looking for, then, yeah, you was going to be disappointed from off the top. Because, let's face facts. Stan wants you there to be somewhat of a sex slave. And how can he be comfortable to run around in whatever kind of shit that he like to run around in, knowing that your 22-year-old son is going to be somewhere around there lurking? Knowing that at any point in time, when you throw your wig back, you could just look around and your son can be trying to figure out what the hell you doing in this basement with this old ass man. Something strange in a straight jacket. Huh? No. That was not what Stan had in mind and I completely agree with him on that. But that's the only thing that I agree with. Because Stan, you were completely out of line for telling that girl when she said... You're a father just like I'm a mother. So I can guarantee you that if the shoe was on the other foot, you would never be treating me the way that I'm treating you. And Stan gonna say, yeah, you're right because that's the difference. I raised my children right and you didn't. That would have that would have been it. That would have been my cue. That's my cue right there. That's my cue right there. Let me get my shit and let me go. Because what you not gonna do is provoke me to go back to jail and you coming down on my motherhood when you see me sitting here trying to do what i need to do to help my child now nah, that's what you're not gonna do
that's what you're not gonna do so stan stan you have really rubbed me raw with this particular episode um i will definitely be dragging you and that motherfucker raccoon on top of your head for the rest of for the duration of the season um you know you're gonna have to do something very spectacular in order to get back in my good graces because First of all, your money ain't long enough, and I can guarantee you your dick is not long enough to try to lock somebody down with your fucking money and lock somebody down with your sex and just tell them, you know, fuck your kids, fuck your family, fuck your friends, fuck all the life that you had before you knew me and just let me upgrade your life. No, bitch, you can't upgrade me with $2 million. You can't do that. And then you talking about when you croak, you only leaving me with with five hundred thousand, huh? You you can't even leave me with a million. You leaving me with five hundred thousand? Like no shade, but five hundred thousand ain't shit these days, and that's no shade. So what I'm telling you is, you got big dick energy, and you got. You know what I'm saying? You you kicking it like you got all this big dick bank account. Like you like you long money McGraw or some shit. But you really not. You really not. So I'ma need you to come down off of that Hugh Hefner throne. Cause you don't have Hugh Hefner money. Hugh Hefner can take a bitch out the hood. Hugh Hefner has the skills and the money to to make a bitch. You know, leave her old world behind. Some of that look, kids. I'll come back for y'all later. Because right about now, I'm about to get to this money. But $2 million is sneezable. $2 million is sneezable. And that's just keeping it real. So, you know, you got a lot of making up to do. Because Lisa done already spilled your tea. She said every time your drunk ass get on a good glass of wine you start talking crazy and then you want to be apologetic the next morning life doesn't work like that stan once again you're too old now i can see if you're getting a little see now if you're getting see now hell say that i will continue to drag your shriveled paled um you know bosley hair club for men I will continue to get on your bad hips and your out of date wearing. I will continue to get on those old cabinets in your kitchen. I will continue to get on that stale ass food in your refrigerator and that dusty ass sex room you call a dungeon. I will continue to be on your ass like those little age spots are on your ass until you make that up to lisa because you did her wrong you don't have to talk to that girl like that you don't have to talk to that girl like that with your drunk ass and that's why you knocked that glass of wine over because you was probably shaking and you probably you probably was seeing double at that point and you hit that motherfucking glass and you knocked it over do better, Stan. Do better. Anyway, y'all, that was this week's episode of Love After Lockup. I hope you enjoyed it. It was okay for me, you know what I'm saying? Stan was the highlight of this particular episode for me. But it's not going to stop me from coming back right next week and doing this shit all over again. So you already know I want you to be happy, be healthy, be safe. This is your girl, P. Hope, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.